Take out the papers and the trash Or you don't get no spending cash the Great Outdoors is somewhat overlooked among 80s comedies despite the presence of two huge stars of the era in Dan Aykroyd and the late John Candy, somewhat because it's a more laid-back sort of production than similar features like Vacation, but more so because it's often compared sight unseen to Candy's more well-known family trip gone wrong hit Summer Rental. But while The Great Outdoors is essentially a feature-length sitcom, it's one that a certain number of devoted fans who discovered it on VHS seem to genuinely love, perhaps because it does a fairly decent job of capturing this particular type of family getaway in the details. In any case, Candy gets the sympathetic starring role in this one as a suburban family man named Chester Chet Ripley, who takes his wife and two sons on a vacation to a lakeside cabin in rural Wisconsin, reminiscent of the trips he took himself as a kid with his family. But Chet's plans for a relaxing old-fashioned getaway are upended when he gets a surprise drop-in visit from his wealthy in-laws, namely his wife's sister Connie, played by Annette Bening in her film debut, Seriously, and Aykroyd as her obnoxious husband Roman Craig, a slick, yuppie investment broker who regular Joe Chet regards as something like his mortal enemy. And that's pretty much the entire plot, good-natured regular dad versus rich yuppie asshole dad in various lakeside vacation activities, with a broader running theme of Roman gradually realizing he kind of sucks as a father compared to Chet and building to a fairly compelling twist ending involving the real reason Roman turned up in the first place. Along the way, you get some pretty solid slapstick sequences involving Chet and the boys getting stuck in their car trying to watch bears at the local dump, Roman insisting on a speedboat rental, and Chet's disastrous attempts to water ski, an overzealous attempt to remove a bat from the cabin, some eccentric, colorful character bits from the locals, and one of those signature, just slightly out-of-place, action-heavy finales 80s comedies like this often sported, this time involving a freak runaway downpour, Roman's twin girls getting trapped in an abandoned mine, and a battle against a locally famous man-eating bear. Oh, and they also give sarcastic subtitled dialogue to a family of raccoons that keep going through the family's trash, which for whatever reason I thought was the most brilliantly funny thing ever when I was about seven. But what's interesting about The Great Outdoors in the context of so many other similar films produced in that era is that these more outsized moments aren't really the focus of the majority of the film. Instead, it sets aside long stretches of screen time for the grown-up characters to engage in primarily dialogue-driven situational comedy sequences, which in many respects end up being the most memorable parts of the film, particularly a bit where Roman goads Chet into attempting to devour a famous 96-pound steak in order to win a free meal at a local restaurant, and a brilliant bit of awkward humor where Roman attempts to calm his girls down after Chet tells a particularly effective ghost story and fails spectacularly. Again, what's interesting here is the level of laid-back authenticity. There's even a whole subplot about Chet's eldest son flirting with a local girl that's played out as the mostly serious part. These days, the film is probably best known for the trivia of being Benning's first Hollywood role before she blew up in Postcards from the Edge and the Grifters, but while it's interesting to note that her tacky yuppie persona here feels very much like a dry run for her celebrated turn in American Beauty about a decade later, she doesn't fully get to shine here. On a similar note, it's impossible to watch most John Candy movies now and not mourn a little bit for how little of his range Hollywood movies allowed him to explore before his untimely death. Anyone who's seen his early sketch comedy work can attest Candy was capable of a lot more than playing straight man comedy dad types, but on the other hand, he was really good at it, and he puts that persona to effective use, if not all-time classic use here. But the performance to see the movie for is Dan Aykroyd. By now, the ubiquity of Ghostbusters and adorable man-baby Ray Stans has pretty much overwhelmed his public persona, so it's easy to forget that for a long time, Aykroyd's calling card was being the best in the comedy business at playing total and complete assholes. And while Roman Craig isn't quite as legendary in that regard as Trading Places, Louis Winthorpe, he's well observed and a lot of fun in his own right, while also being a different nouveau riche 80s douchebag vintage of asshole, or as we're calling it these days, presidential. The Great Outdoors isn't an all-time classic, but if you're an 80s comedy A-lister completist and you've managed to miss it so far, you should probably give it a shot, especially if you can relate to the experience of this type of family vacation. It definitely has its fans, and they think it's a real gem.